Welcome back to the show. My name is Brendan Davis. I am your host. You probably figured that out already. We are cross-posting this this week, and by we I mean me, on both of my long-form solo podcasts on If I Knew You Better and also Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom, my original podcast. And my guest today is a guy who's become a really good friend. He was on one of my earlier shows, and we were still sorting out our recording and such, and it was a remote interview, and I remember the Skype gremlins were were definitely fighting us that day. And we have talked for eh, probably three years now about getting together and doing another new and much improved now that he himself is a successful podcaster and makes videos and all of our technical issues are solved. Uh, please welcome return returning champion, my friend Ronald Paredes. How are you, Ronald? <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Uh, uh, I don't know if I deserve that introduction, but uh, thank you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody deserves an introduction, and you deserve a better one than that. I I will link the original episode, but so much has changed for me and you. You know, just just every the world's changed. Obviously, the situation we're in as we record is. The 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 approaching the peak of the pandemic in the states and you're in China where it seems to be a little bit on the downhill slope, of course. So we'll get into that for a minute. But this show will not be all COVID-19 all the time. I want to start. Let me just ask you to give us kind of the short, you know, kind of snapshot introduction to yourself, kind of shortish bio, who you are, where you're from, what led you to where you are. And then we'll kind of go from there. Well, I I am originally from Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, I'm an artist and graphic designer. Uh, that's what I have been my entire life. Uh, my father was an artist. My mother also an artist. Actually, that's how they met. So this is what I have been doing basically my entire life. And uh, I came to China in 2006. It's been 14 long years. Married, divorced, two kids, married again. So, yeah, it's been it's been crazy uh, <laughs> here in China. I've been lucky to 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 keep working on design. Yeah, uh, been doing graphic design and art. Uh, it's not like uh, in a lot of cases when people come to China and they have to uh, transition into being a an English teacher or uh, well. A That's model. a pretty typical job, I, some kind of yeah, something I else, I, yeah. I wouldn't do the model thing because, you know, <laughs> I don't have the attributes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I consider myself lucky to be to continue doing what I do, you know, and, and to sustain myself uh, still doing design and art. So that's what I've been doing all this time here in China. And in the original interview that, again, I will link... I would say that, you know, in those show notes, I, I, I used to be writing the long show notes. Did you go through that? I used to write like a novella, yeah, I did. and now it's like about three, four sentences, you know, because I want people to get to the <laughs> interview. But back then, I think there's like a like a chapter of a, of a book, basically, uh, to only exaggerate a little bit. But I talk about your history. We talk about your history as, I mean, you worked in advertising and, and design, and, and you've, you know, kind of a fine artist and illustrator and even doing kind of pop art and things like that. Um, one right now, without even stopping the, the podcast, people can see an exi- one example of your art by just looking at whatever icon is on their podcast app as, as either the big fish or the, if I knew you better logo, because you have been kind enough to design all of my current show logos, the logo, the, from my podcasting course on you to me. Uh, you even did a stand-up flyer for what we hoped would be a long-term, a long-term podcast. David Jacobs and I created the Three C Show, and we had one glorious uh, show at the Bookworm. May it rest in peace in Beijing. And you know, Bookworm closed, and shortly after that, COVID exploded, and I had to evac, and that's a whole long story. But so it looks like we're not doing a Three C's podcast. But you've done all the artwork for those, They're all very different. There's obviously mm-hmm. a certain sensibility behind them which is cool how how do you define your general aesthetic like your approach to looking at the world well there is um there is a differentiation when when you work as an artist and you work as a designer and people tend to confuse the both 
the, the, the both careers. And, you know, when you're a designer, you owe yourself to your client. And uh, it's a different thing when you do art and they ask you to do your art to implement on a product or a to use as a, as a campaign or something like that, that's different. But when you are a designer and, and you have to understand the aesthetic of the client and the brand of the client, and you have to do work that is for the client, not for you. Right. So that's why you have to adapt. You yeah. have to adapt to what the client requires. Mm -hmm. It's different than when you're an artist. When you're an artist, you do, you do your thing, and if people ask you your work... Uh, to use it as a brand or in a brand, then you do your thing. It's, it's your aesthetic. But sure. Yeah, you have to differentiate that. Sure, but case in point, you are you are both. I mean, you're a designer and you're an artist. I mean, you have your own your own art. You have your own artistic statements. I mean, is there? I mean, I know your work, but I don't want to be one of these, you know, uh, beard scratching hippies, kind of imposing my own thoughts on it. I'm I'm curious. What to you, the themes that drive you, what what motivates you, what 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 impels you to pick up the pen or the brush or the you know the the weapon of choice for the art that you're making? What 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 kind of for the for for when it's you and it's your heart or your mind? What what kind of gets you going? Yeah, um, sometimes it's difficult because I try to communicate. Uh, when you are a graphic designer, you are basically a, a visual communicator. I, I have I was I was giving a class uh, like last month to a group of uh, French graphic design students, and I always make emphasis on that that we are visual communicators. We are communicators, and whatever you do as a graphic designer, it should convey a message. So. It's not only ab about producing beautiful images or producing uh, beautiful pictures, but conveying a message, transmitting a message. And sometimes it gets difficult. And you, you have to understand uh, how, how to work with the codes of the mind, like I like, I like to call it. Colors work in a, in a way, uh, symbols work in a way, shapes, the composition, they all convey a message. And you have to be able to manipulate all this stuff. So basically, I try to pay attention. I, I always try to keep my eyes and my ears wide open and pay attention to what the clients want to communicate. Or what I think, sometimes I, in many cases, the clients, they, they have no idea. They don't know what they want to say or how they want to convey a message. And I have to help them. And I have to kind of build a message around their brand so that I have to help them in the way in, in, to do that I have to understand where they come from and where they want to take their brand to well that's a great answer but I think maybe my question isn't translating properly I'm asking besides your design work for your own artistic work it this represents Ronald Paredes's heart what what are the re, what are the things that you do for yourself Forget no client. You're the client. It's something you want artist. to do. Yes, as yeah. an artist, what is what is your? I appreciate that answer. I, I was you answered the next question first. So, yes, but I'm I'm curious about you as an artist because I know. Look, let me let me let me point it in the direction I'm trying to elicit a little more information. You obviously care about you know socially progressive issues women's rights and 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 you know you you your story is quite a story i'm going to ask you to kind of give the short version after we i want to talk about some art first uh but your your essential you know essentially your escape from your home country during the the, the situation there you know i mean I, so you're you're dealing with these issues of displacement and belonging and I, again i don't want to put too much on it but Please put some stuff on it. I want. Yeah. To, I want. I want to tell people what the, what they can kind of be expecting to contemplate if they go to look at your work, like your actual artistic work. Yeah. The the yeah. You're completely right. I, but in the same way that I, I try to communicate messages with my work, I, I do it as an artist, and uh, I think art 
is a form of communication that have to be exploded. They have to be, uh, you know, used to to convey messages to the people. I try to do the same with my art. So every time I have, uh, I'm very sensitive about issues regarding uh, homelessness, uh, regarding injustice in society, uh, women abuse. I'm very sensitive to these kind of issues. Of course, uh, the social turmoil that we're having in my country right now, it, it has a lot to do with with this situation. Uh, how I want to communicate what is happening in my country or what is happening in society in general. I, 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 don't, I don't do too much work related to my country. Yeah, uh, I've noticed that There's a lot of a lot of China when you when you're when you can identify when I can lo- localize it to a place it's clearly China but but yeah, you've lived there for I, a while now so that makes sense exactly you know, I, I try to be more general in in how I uh, general issues in in society mm-hmm. so yeah uh, I I have a series about uh, women abuse and how because here in China uh, we have seen how how difficult it is for Chinese society uh, for women in Chinese society you know how difficult it is sometimes uh, for women to to get the respect mm-hmm. that they deserve so uh, I have a, a series of drawings and paintings about this uh, because this is something that I wanted to to uh, attack something that I wanted to talk about uh, Another series that I have uh, is about war and peace. And a little bit but living in Nanjing for a long time, I was uh, quite sensitive mm-hmm. to the issue of uh, Nanjing, the Nanjing massacre. Right. And uh, I was trying to say, in a way, that this is not not only something that happened in Nanjing; it keeps happening today around the world. Yeah. And it is. It, it is. Of course, it is a horrible thing, but it's something that we tend to forget, you know. Yeah. Uh, we we talk about these issues, and they say they seem so foreign, so far away. Yeah, I mean, the, and, the, the the Nanjing massacre was was early days World War II, and it's before the U.S. was even in the war. So, from a Western perspective, we often, I mean, it's it it, it that is one of those unfortunate landmarks in China's painful history that, that, that we do learn about briefly. But, of course, I yeah. mean, at, at least way back in the Dark Ages when I was in school, it wasn't the focus because, you know, at the time China was was not even really open. China was not open when I was in school. I mean, I'm 52. You know, I was already... Three, all, yeah. I, I was already in, you know, I was, I was through... I was coming up on... I was in middle school, basically, when China started to open, you know, to the world. 40 odd years ago. So, so, so not, so, so how long were you in Nanjing? How long have you been in China basically, specifically? Yeah. 14 years. And I was, yeah, I was 10 of those years, 11 of those years in, in Nanjing. And, and have you been in, you you said you're in, uh, Nantong is the nearest like city to you now. And that's still a relatively small China. A small city for China, so it's probably only eight million people. Yeah, it's, a <laughs> it's probably the size of Los Angeles, basically. How, how, how big? How big? <laughs> yeah. how, how big is Nan? <laughs> it's a small place. It's the size of you know, uh, you know, Detroit. Actually, Nantong is massive. How big is it? Do you know? I'll, I'll look on the internet uh, while you're talking. Your next point. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how big, but you have to drive a lot. You have to drive yeah. a lot to get anywhere. It's it's pretty spread out. It, yeah, and it's a pretty important city. It's a port. Uh, city okay. and it's a uh, yeah i've never been there I, I sort of have a vague sense of where it is on the, it i'm i'm assuming that it's am i correct to assume that it's south of is it north or south of shanghai because if it's port then it's real it's relative it's on the coast so it's north or south of shanghai where is it relative to shanghai? yeah northwest northwest from shanghai north oh, okay so it's up as the coast goes yeah. goes in Okay. Um, uh, Nantong is a prefecture-level city in Jiangsu Province, China, located on the northern bank of the Yangtze River near the river mouth. Oh, that sounds pretty. I know that area. 
Um, vital rear report, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm looking for population really quickly. So it's 3.2, it's, it's 3,300 square miles is the size of the place. And uh, I'm trying to pull up your population. I don't know why this fascinated me such as it is. It, but yes, I'm looking at it. Oh, there we go. So population. Wow. Okay. I it's was kind of kidding. So I think Metro LA is, I mean, everybody here between like 8 million and 11 million. And some people say it's four. I don't know where they get these numbers. But um, I think the generally accepted consensus is that LA is between 8 and 10 million people. Uh, guess how big Nantong is? Seven how point seven point um, three million people. There you <laughs> and go. It's like, and, there you you, go. and before we were recording for the show, you're like, yeah, you know, it's like really kind of a small town. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's China. Small that's town China relative second to China. Tier. Yeah, yeah like, that's China. So, second it, tier. so it is a second tier city, though, which means it's yeah. pretty pretty damn developed. I mean, it's still missing maybe a few things. Probably, probably doesn't have an international airport, but it probably has like a local airport. Instance. They're working on it. Yeah, they're working on it, and they they are. Uh, actually, there is a uh, there is a development for an airport that is gonna be part of Shanghai, like a third airport. Oh, for it's Shanghai. gonna kind of be between. Because yeah. people who don't know people here, Shanghai, and there's two main airports in Shanghai, and I, I mean, you know, Pudong is like, I mean, it's it's a trip, or it's like if you flown to if you flown to Bangkok, Thailand. I mean, the airport is kind of in the sticks. I mean, you're on like a yeah. you're on a you're on a fast train for half an hour to get into the city, or you're in a car for an hour, you know, to get yeah. to the proper city. Um, why Nantong? Is this now? Is this you have in laws down that way, or was there some other reason? I know you you seem to like that part of China. You kind of landed in that Nanjing, Shanghai. They're sort of sister cities. You landed down in that area. And have you just well, kind of that's um, that's the place for you, or is this a family thing as well? Yeah, it's a family thing. It's about my my wife. Uh, she's from. Thing is, Nanton have like uh, cities within cities. So my okay. wife is from Hai Hai Men countryside, and that belongs to Nanton. Mm-hmm. And we were looking for uh, to getting a place to buying a place, and it was a, buying one of these very small cities. And uh, or buying in Nanton. I didn't want to go and live. I I didn't want to settle down in a, a small village, you know, in a small yeah. city. I wanted something bigger. It was a hub. Also, there is a project that is about to open. Uh, that is the fast train connected to Shanghai. It will be a commute of about 30, 40 minutes. Oh, that's nothing. So it's, it would be like a living in the outskirts of Shanghai. Yeah. Which for me as an artist is very convenient. Exactly. Because you do a lot of, train. you're down there a lot, either for work or inspiration or friends or things like that. Yeah. A lot of uh, art activities. Yeah. Uh, yeah Shanghai is pretty awesome. Or so. Beijing's been my home, but... I mean, if I was starting from scratch, I, and I, if I was somehow magically starting from scratch in China, or if I knew somebody that was very similar to me disposition-wise, I would probably, you know, if they were, uh, depending on their job, of course, that would determine all. But I would probably, just in terms of general quality of life, I'd probably steer them to China. Yeah. yeah. Well, if uh, you do what I do, you have to be in Shanghai or nearby. Yeah. Thing is... I couldn't afford to live in Shanghai right oh, now. It's, so it's expensive. extremely expensive. It's so expensive. I yeah. mean, if you, if you want to get a place for you and, and your wife and your kid, uh, you have to get a pretty decent big place, and that's expensive. Sure. And to get into the Shanghai traffic, uh, to commute I, I, to the downtown. That part's no good. Yeah. That part's it's going to no be good. 30, 40 minutes of, yeah. in traffic. Yeah, a, bull, a bullet train with uh, the bullet train in to the and you know, and then perhaps a, a city train to the nearest, like a lower speed train to the nearest stop. I mean, if you yeah. have to, if you have to connect, are you going to live near the Nantong hub once it opens? Is that kind of where you scoped out like your place is pretty convenient to getting on the train in Nantong? Like once, uh, once that once that opens that, up, that. no. No, <laughs> what's about calculation there? But <laughs> you have a half hour drive to the train, and then you have half hour yeah, on the train. Yeah, okay. like thirty minutes. Uh, nice. Is it like twenty minutes to the? Eh, but um, that's still not. That's also, still not too oh, bad. Yeah, I'm also people, working on the subway. 
Yeah, I mean that's that's it, it's far. It's it's kind of like, I mean, if high speed rail could just ever get going here in the states, you know, and our our lives are different, et cetera. And I've I've gone on about this probably too much in other other times and venues, but but having become such a giant fan of the, I mean, I whenever I would travel for work in China. With few exceptions, there are a handful of times where it's like, you know, yeah, the flight's better. But almost all the time, man, if there's a bullet train that's like I can get on and I get off at the place, I'm sold. You know, those those trains are so, so smooth, so smooth yeah. and so yeah. fast and so nice. And Shanghai, I, Shanghai to Beijing is like 40 hour, uh, four hours. Only. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Four and, hours. and people understand that's Shanghai to Beijing is, I mean... I think it's like half the distance from like LA to New York or something. It's it's a long way. Yeah, it's it physically is. it's a long ass way to be you know to be technical about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you can you can literally you could get on and you could if you caught that morning train you could have you could you could wake up and you know you could wake up in Shanghai and have lunch in Beijing basically. Yeah. You know. Or vice versa, so which is pretty cool. It's very convenient, mm -hmm. and you get into and, and you get into downtown. I mean, you don't have to go to yeah. the airport and then take a taxi back to downtown. No. Yeah, God, that airport. <laughs> have you come into coming yeah. into coming in from Pudong or whatever? You know, especially well, in Beijing. Beijing. Oh fire, yeah, no? I haven't been to the new one yet. Have you been to the new fancy one they just opened? No, I it's actually I been to it's Beijing. way south of the city. It's like you know the current Beijing airport is northeast. And people who live mm -hmm. in the center or to the west or south of the city go, I got it so far. I, I'm on the east side of Beijing, so I'm like, this is sweet. I just go up the fourth ring road, and then it's a spur up to the airport. And I'm riding in the back of a DD anyway, you know, so I'm not having to drive and deal with it. You, you drive. You got your car and stuff. You're, you're, a, you're, you're a local, man. But, um, but without boring people to death with talking about the airports, the, the thing, this amazing new one that people might have seen, the Beijing one, the Daxing Airport, it looks awesome. But it's it's a long way from the city. It's like way farther than the the old airport, which is the one I'll still yeah. still be using. I think if if I can ever go back. So let's let's talk about this. Let's do the obligatory. How has you know what's your pandemic story? How has this affected your life? Let's let's, let's kind of do this obligatory. But I mean, I'd say that not like it won't be interesting just to say that there will be a time when we don't. There's nothing to talk about really. Um, other than where were you? And I'm glad you made it too, because that'll be a conversation we have with people. But what's this been like for you? You've been, you've been in China the whole time. I mean, people, I've talked about it <laughs> before we were going. I told Ronald the one thing I said, you know, because Ronald hosts his, his, his own show, his own podcast. And we discussed even kind of maybe tag teaming and trading. And I'm like, you know, the thing is a lot of what you might ask for your show is stuff I've talk to death for my listeners so i don't want to do my escape from beijing story but but what was your you've been there man what's been your uh well, what's been your experience with all know, this craziness i laugh because uh there is a meme running around in, in the internet that says that how is quarantine for designers uh it's pretty much the same <laughs> oh oh yeah your life is the same it shows <laughs> Like but before quarantine, after quarantine, the same. The guy, like the guy or the gal, chained to their yeah. desk, and yeah, for graphic designer, we don't go out, we don't, I, I, we don't sleep, we just. <laughs> I, okay, so our story is really similar. I mean, I, I mostly, you know, I mean, I've had a few jobs in in film companies or whatnot, or of course, we're teaching back in the day, but you know, I've had a few jobs where I had to go to a place and do a thing or go to an office, but I've mostly on the balance, I've mostly worked for myself, and I've. Even if mm -hmm. I had an office, I typically also, I mean, I've always had a home office also. And the majority yeah. of my life, the, the majority of time at this point, it's crossed over to where it's definitely been work from home, yeah. you know? Yeah, but I can tell you, uh, we, we have our apartment in Nantong, but we we decided to spend the, the quarantine time with the in-laws in the countryside. Yeah. And my in-laws, actually, I'm in a farm right now. Oh, cool! And it's, sur it's surprisingly quiet today. And oh, yeah, you, you well, can all hear the when animals. We, <laughs> when we talked about this, you were saying, you know, it's, it could be tricky because you know, my my mother in law is you know country lady, and you kind of hear her coming from down the down the block, and and uh, just animals. I, I was expecting to hear like 
I thought you could be like Dr. It's Doolittle been, down there. It's surprisingly quiet today. It's working it's totally great. Quiet. But, uh, it's loud yeah, on I'm my end farm. with a fan from my MacBook. It's quieter. It's, yeah. You're on a farm and it's quieter than me sitting here in a studio yeah. environment with a MacBook that won't shut up. But yeah, so so, my, so you were... I mostly raised goats. And uh, it, was, it, it, it was a different experience in the countryside than in the city because... Um, we are, uh, in a way, we are isolated. I mean, from where we live right now, where mm-hmm. we are, uh, to go to the store in the village, you have to drive like five, ten minutes okay. to go to the to the supermarket, and that is like the place of interest in the in the village, you know, the supermarket. Uh, that that's like the hub of the social activity is yeah. go to the yeah, market the and landmark. you see you see people and they people see and each other. Have to and- dr- Exactly. Oh, yeah. And, and then they go back to drive like five, ten minutes. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it, we thought, well, we are isolated here. We're safe. Yeah. But they found people infected here. And okay. they completely closed all the access to everywhere. Okay. And well, it was crazy. Well, tell me about that. Because, see, I've heard these tales. I've heard these tales. And as much as you, I mean, you don't have to belabor it. But, I mean, I'm, I'm really curious to hear what that was like. So you were in the village when some cases were discovered yeah. and then they're like, okay, no ins and outs. Like, no ins like, and outs. No ins and uh, outs. But like, like deliveries? Case, Could you get like Taobao be- coming in? Things like that? That's like the Amazon uh, well, for non- There was a, there was a moment that we had to buy diapers for our baby and uh, we had to have the lady from the store. There is a store yeah. in the village and she brought the diapers to the bridge and I had to go get them from the lady herself, the, the owner of the store. Like, like on a on the a world. bridge, like not even to your house, but like yeah, what's the like? What's like the boundary? The, the oh, it's like the, ba- the so it's like the boundary there. of your house. Like she brought them to like the outside gate or something, and yeah, set it there. And the bridge and was barricaded. Backed off, and and of course you you paid with your phone. You paid with WeChat or whatever. So you she my didn't wife have to, she paid it. So yeah, she didn't have to trade her money. She paid her through exactly. electronic. Stuff, yeah, but no deliveries, no Taobao, no uh, Taobao uh, for people who are not from China. It's like, a, a how will be the, the it's like Amazon, the, you know, it, it's Amazon basically that it's delivery. like the Amazon or you know, for uh, yeah, eBay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but there were uh, barricades, uh, like uh, in a radius of uh, two miles, so like police checks. You couldn't get, or like 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 those no, community no, no. those community uh, the community Volunteers, committee yeah. the local community committee which is like the it's kind of like the grandparent it's like the old it's like the grandparents and the older folks usually in the neighborhood who are sort of like yeah. the volunteer like the honor exactly. guard or whatever and they have like these red they have these armbands and that was a strange well, thing have, to get. those they people though the, the red band people yeah or, yeah the older people the local older people but not only that. It, it, but there was no like a, there was some access no there was no access at all I mean barricaded there were places where they put like rocks and oh they they physically uh, bury it wasn't just here's like the sawhorse and a guy going sorry you can't go it's like no it's like, it's like no. screw you guys we're gonna build a wall we're gonna build a brick exactly. wall really I mean they, they, really? They, yeah they put like that's a, a lot like of effort a, but they probably did yeah. it in a day because it's they probably did it by lunch whatever day they started oh, because it's yeah. China because it's like wham it's just it's magically but so yeah they put no it on a, like a scaffold and, and scaffold and yeah. uh, sand and rocks yeah. in it so oh you yeah can, you cannot physically go through even with a bike huh and it was funny hmm. because there are, there are some canals here some like a small no it's not a river it's not even a river so just water canals and yeah. people were trying to sneak out through oh like go, go down the creek basically <laughs> like walk down yeah. the walk down the little creek or whatever the no with boats with little oh, boats, with boats. The, but did they have somebody yeah, catching them at the other end they wouldn't yeah they wouldn't <laughs> they Man. wouldn't let them go and, and how and, and did they just turn them around or did they like yeah. take it to okay they didn't go to the trouble of taking them in they're just like Nope, go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just go back. Well, how long did that but excitement that, last? How, how how long was that? The the the, the vibe. That was like uh, three weeks, two okay. three weeks. Okay. It was a long time. And roughly when time did roughly when did it start? I mean, I I I'm doing you a disservice because I'd love to know 
roughly, I'd love to know dates for the reason of people listening to this in the West will go, what, way back then? You know, because the point is this this was probably, I'm guessing this was February when it started. Well, the, the no, the lockdown actually started way earlier. Like January. Uh, literally one day before, yeah, 24th. Well, oh, okay. So the 24th was Chinese New Year's Eve, right? Or was that 25th, the 25th, yeah, exactly. 25th yeah. was Chinese New Year. Yeah, so the 24th, 24th was Chinese was, New Year's Eve, yeah. Yeah. And that's when the and, order was issued that nobody goes okay. anywhere. Jan- January 20th. Okay, so for, for the sake of everybody else, and if you're listening to this, you're smart or at least curious uh, kind of person. And yeah, January 24th was when yeah. they were taking those measures there in rural China. Uh, far away yeah. from, I mean, like you're not, you're not, uh, you know. But the battery you're, 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 here you're happened not, like a... Hmm? What's that? The, the barricading here happened like a, uh, a week or two after that. Uh, the first was the order, nobody goes out, and there were the control points. But the moment when they started barricading all the roads was like a week or two after when they found some people infected here in the area. Okay. So they want to really just eliminate traffic, just, just yeah, no ins and outs. So that was, that was about three weeks of that. And then and I was and, going insane. I will take the car and just go to the uh, drive to the barricade and then go back. I <laughs> drive up there, wave at him, turn around. Yeah. Uh, did um, did what about stay at home, uh, quarantine without without the physical barricade? Did that last a bit longer? Was that already when they when they took out the physical barricade? Did they also lift the restrictions, or was it on the honor system at that point that you remember? Because it's been a while. It was. For, like, it's yeah, been, yeah, no, it's been. It, uh, there was uh, a precautions still that were still on. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to go out, uh, for example, if you want, we wanted to go to Nanton, to the city, uh, in the expressway to go through the toll, uh, you know, the, all the checks, uh, yeah. it's kind of your code, your temperature. Mm-hmm. In my case, being a foreigner... I was literally questioned. What so you, are you doing here? So Why you, you're here? You, you had to roll with all your papers. Normally, this is stuff that you don't have with you, but you had like your passport and your probably your marriage license yeah. and your residence permit. And, all and I have to prove stuff. why I'm here. And, yeah. and then uh, it was not only police; it was police, medical, uh, uh, me- medical staff. Okay. But also, it was a local government. People from the communist government uh, actually checking okay. that everything was. F- Functioning. So at every and checkpoint, there were from, multiple people who were all, yeah. s- they had different concerns, but they were all looking at your stuff, basically. Yeah. The police are probably checking dates of things, and the and, local people are checking yeah. your residence, and and the party people are probably like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, no, no, there <laughs> like was the, a police, like, like a the policeman. Why questions probably from the party folks. Yeah, no, okay. there was a policeman. Literally, uh, he knocked on my, my window. And with with this face, you know, like angry, like what are you doing here? You know, like because in in China, every foreigner is uh, is suspicious. Is sure. And uh, what are you doing here? You know, like oh, angry. And uh, mm. my wife, he's my husband. He's been living here for. He's never been out of China. What what is the problem? And no, no, we have to make a phone call, and then they take my passport and take it away. Wow. And make phone calls and take pictures, and it was distressing. So. We decided not to go through the toll to yeah. using the expressway. You just use the the, the country road. Okay, so they but don't have uh, checks on the it, country road. No, they don't. Which is right where it, all the sick people escaped. But this is it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Not even a policeman. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing about. at all. Okay, so that's nothing effective. at all. Well, they well I guess at some point they they would like if they were heading towards say Shanghai, or well like I said if they get into Nantong proper. Or some other yeah. direct, then they're they're gonna run into they're gonna run into some checks as soon as they try to go in places. So are you, are you still showing? So there's this thing. It's it's interesting. I was listening to uh, the Daily podcast from the New York Times, hosted by Marco Michael Barbaro, who's so great. And his I was listening to the episode from today. We're recording just as a point of reference. We're recording on uh, Tuesday U.S. Uh, Wednesday China time. And on the episode of the Daily that came out today, um, or actually, you know, I think it was yesterday's, 
It was actually yesterday's episode, but I listened to it today. Donald McNeil Jr., who's a science and health reporter for The Times, talked about understanding our path out of lockdown in the U.S. And one of the things that he said, and of course the host's role is to be a bit credulous and ask the questions even if they themselves actually know the answer they're asking on behalf of the listener. Um, So the host asked the guest... This is the April 20th episode of The Daily. Really good, really interesting interview, although for you it'd be like like old news. But but they got to the point where the host was asking this guest who is esteemed and has covered pandemics for decades and one of the leading experts as a journalist about this stuff. Um, what's it look like and what can we look forward to or, or get ready for? And among the things he said were things that I know are old school in China. He was saying like, you know, having... Um, some kind of like a digital certificate to prove your whereabouts and your health check mm-hmm. and being prepared to show it at any given time. And he mentioned this and he yeah. ended up saying, you know, in China, there's, you know, a QR based app uh, and it's like it's through WeChat, right? It's like a QR code. But basically you have a app now that shows green, yellow or red, which anybody who knows what a stop sign means understands what that means. You need to green to go mm-hmm. anywhere. And if you yeah. got yellow, it's going to be some questions. And red is like you're not supposed to, <laughs> you're not supposed to be yeah. on the street. You're supposed to be in treatment somewhere. So basically, so. what it does is that it, it it records your where have you been, and if you have been in places of risk, yeah, uh, your risk to be infected. So, but using your 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 location, yeah, it tracks your, your, your records. It, it, it's it's yes. a cooperation with. Yeah, the idea of data privacy, and I mean, it's kind of yeah, a joke in the not, West, but there's no pretense of it in, in over there. So they, no, so, yeah, so, so, so the cell provider is like, here's here's where they've been, here's all their data points, mm-hmm. every bit. Yeah, they walk they walk 13 so, steps, and they made a left, and then they're in the, you know, it's like every single thing. And so, but you but the good those? news is, you know, that it's it's at least. I mean, it helps. It, it, it helps. Yeah. I mean, it's a one lot. of these draconian things that. It's an invasive. You know, it's invasive. It's, uh, yeah. it's intrusive. This is that slippery but, slope that everybody talks about because it's like yeah. we're both sitting here saying it's a good thing and it's necessary, but it's also an invasive thing. And of course, you see how it just underscores yeah, that you have absolutely no, no real privacy. One of the things anything. that I was telling my wife uh, when we were in the, in the peak of the pandemic here is. Uh, I'm really worried that this thing really go to the West. Yeah. Because people, they are not going to be able to handle it. And because of the mentality, you know, people don't understand how this thing works. And people in China or in Asia in general, they are deal, they are, they're used to deal with this kind of stuff. Yeah. But we on, in the West, just the, the fact that we have to use a mask. I know. It's weird. We don't. And, People telling us what to do and stay home and isolate yourself. What? Yeah. No. So it, it, it can get messy. And, yeah. And, you know, you, you're seeing it right now. I, I'm, as you're saying it, um, I mean, of course, you know, we, when, when doing shows, I'm sure you do the same thing. And like we're using video just so we can see each other. The audience won't see it. But you use nonverbals. When somebody's on a point, you want to continue. Yeah. You give them like, the, yeah, please, more, more, more. I was just doing that like crazy to Ronald because I've been saying that. I mean, I was asked months ago. It's like, unfortunately, I think my countrymen and women are not, are neither psychologically nor logistically prepared mm-hmm. for this to go smoothly. And then, of course, yeah, you see these hillbillies. Give us our freedom. We want, we, you know. You know yeah. The this, social this distancing ridiculous. protesters. It's like okay, well, there's, it's there's, not, there's, there's, it's, there's, it's there's not about anybody. Darwin's waiting room, you know, <laughs> right there. Yeah, people don't get it. It's not about. This is not about anybody taking away your liberties or your freedom. This is not about that. This is a very s- serious virus. Yeah. Yeah. It's very easily spread. Mm-hmm. It's very contagious. It's very resilient. Yeah. And if you don't take these measures. You could literally die. This thing kills you. Have you have you known and, anybody kind of closest to you who who is either really messed up with it or who who succumbed to it? I, I mean, I'm asking no, you to tell their story no. or violate their confidence, but I, I've had some. No, I've had literally. a lot of friends. I've had quite a few friends who had it but recovered, and I've had. Yeah, I've, I've definitely had a lot of friends of friends. 
among the wider circle of people, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of people that have died that are like one step, like a, you know, two steps removed from me, like my friend's friend or mm. relative. And it's and it can mm. be, yeah, I mean, if if it gets you, it's nasty. It's yeah. really really bad if it, if if you're on the unlucky end of the draw with that. So yeah, yeah I, and people I, were talking I, I about no, it's for old it, people. You know? I do not no. want to get it. I I people say no, this is for old people. If you have your your immune system, uh, you know, in bad conditions, or uh, yeah, if you have a precondition, uh, pre-existing conditions, medical conditions, it's, it's gonna get you. No, uh, if you're tired, mm-hmm. just as simple as that. If you're exhausted, and it gets Makes you, you more susceptible. you're done. Yeah. Yeah, the stress. You if you, yeah, if your immune system is in the dirt. Yeah, I've actually been. I, I felt a little. Um, uh, I mean, you have a you have a small child, so uh, you're you're not your your sleep is probably not as blissfully uninterrupted as mine is. I just, I deal with you know the garbage trucks, the other essential people out there doing the doing the city jobs sometimes <laughs> a little early in the morning. But um, but I've been I have been sleeping my ass off. I've been. You know, I mean, that's part of my stay healthy plan is give, yeah, my, give, my, give, uh, give myself about a 10 hour window to sort of, you know, land the plane, hopefully get some sleep, wake up in a civilized, you know, probably hopefully hoping to get seven or eight hours within a 10 hour window of chill a day. And it's because I'm, I'm how productive have you been? I have been working my ass off i've been same here no i've been busier during this time you know now that i've gotten into a groove and i've got some routines going and it's not just busy i mean i'm doing stuff i'm delivering stuff you know I'm checking boxes off lists and it feels great yeah. so other than being broke because a lot of this is fulfillment of other things or it's pre- <laughs> it's prep it's it's essential prep for for future it's basically a lot of i'm doing a lot of things that equate that equate to future money <laughs> but you got to yeah. do it. You know, it's like things you have to do. How, how about you? How are you surviving and thriving and doing your thing right now? Well, you know, this is a thing that took everybody by surprise. And uh, this is the literal case of uh, saving for a rainy day. Yeah. If you're not able to do that, I mean, you're, you're, you're done. Uh, I know a lot of people who lost their business, people who were yeah. doing very, very well. Mm-hmm with that, making a lot of money and they lost contracts of millions of dollars. Yeah. So imagine for average people like, like me, uh, you know, I, I'm self-employed. Sure. I don't have a, a regular income. Uh, so I have to, you know, do whatever, whatever it takes. Now right. I'm doing uh, online courses and I'm trying to, uh, I'm preparing workshops to do online. I just released um, a free drawing lesson. Yeah. Drawing courses. I was going to link that. T- talk about that a little bit. What it is and, I mean, you know. It's a cool thing to do for this time right now. It's a cool thing to put out yeah. there for folks. So it, my idea is uh, also having kids. I know how difficult it is having kids around. Uh, without going to school yeah. and nothing to do, yeah. uh, you cannot work. You can lit- you literally cannot work having kids around jumping. On- <laughs> I talk about <laughs> this bored. with Kevin Geiger, and, he, and he's super dad and like loves his kids. I mean, you guys get along in that regard really well. But he and his wife work together, and now they're stuck, and they're stuck in Taiwan. Yeah, and the two like yeah. two little girls, man, and they just got one of them and- in first grade. So or it is horrible to tell you. You know, you, you have your kid. I, I my my, my three years old. He yeah. literally, he's so funny. He comes here and he literally closes my laptop and nah. pulls me by. The hand. <laughs> like enough, Papa. <laughs> enough. And, uh, yeah, and uh, it is horrible to tell the kid. You know, leave me alone. I'm working. You just you just don't do that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So you have to rearrange your time and you rearrange your life to make space for you know for your kid that is bored. For your wife, that needs help with the kid. Mm-hmm. Maybe she's also working. Right. Uh, it, it it's difficult, you know. So my idea with these courses is is that uh, to give to people something to do while they're in quarantine. Uh, maybe they can do it with their kids, or maybe they can do it. Uh, they can put the kid to practice drawing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something very simple, very basic. 
but it's also a way for me to drive traffic to my website and to drive traffic to the other stuff that I want to sell. Right. Uh, I have, and I, I'm not asking money people, but I'm asking like a, if people can contribute somehow or, you know, have a, a Patreon account and I have mm-hmm. my PayPal thing and the, yeah. I just yeah. set it up in my website. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of try, a suggested you know? donation sort of model where it's like, yeah. if you find value here, please. Because you know, I know consider. we are all in the mud. You know, we are, oh, yeah. we are all in the same situation. And uh, to be asking, I, I don't feel good about, you yeah. know, send me money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. no, I, 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 was, I made a joke with somebody the other day. It's like it's, it's probably a little crass to start a GoFundMe page for myself at this point in my life. But I am considering asking my mom for my allowance <laughs> back. You know, yeah. Considering seeing if so, I can get, get five bucks a week or something if I virtually mow the lawn. Her husband takes care of the lawn, yeah. so there's, there's there's no angle. <laughs> I got no angle. <laughs> but but you and put although the, in, yeah, it's good. No, the, and although in China the situation that with the coronavirus has, well, the government said that it's over. They had it controlled. Yeah. But we're right now talking about a second coming, a second right, wave, right, right. and new more people infected, mm-hmm. and yeah. People are back to normal, but they're very cautious, and nobody's spending money. Nobody is, you know, yeah. extra buying stuff. So it, people are being very, very careful about how I, they spend money. I was in a conversation last night. I'll protect the identity of the, the person who told me, but I understand that Chaoyong District is basically locked down because there's been like a sudden rash of outbreaks, as in like yesterday, neighbor, like just yes. just happened as as we recorded. And this. they're so not by, releasing those numbers. So, so by the time that this this comes out in like three days, who knows? It's maybe maybe they've tracked it and got a handle, or maybe you know who knows. Hopefully, it's better. But yeah, so when you from your perspective, I've gone on about this a lot on my end. From your perspective, you're a fellow. You know, you're you're a fellow foreign friend living in China, and you see what's happening in the outside world, and you're sitting there with your knowledge that you're just describing some of. But when you're looking at the world's response, what are you what are you seeing? That what, are you seeing anything positive? What are you seeing that's the the, the patently obviously stupid responses are are fairly visible. You know, I, but uh, yeah, what are you what are you thinking about this whole situation? And and we're gonna. Circle. We're gonna circle back to a broader China conversation after this. But for first question, what are you thinking when you look out when you when you look over here? I imagine you go, "Yep, expected that kind of." <laughs> Don't uh, put words in your yeah, mouth, I but mean, uh, we've I, had conversations offline. I wasn't offline. expecting. No, I wasn't expecting the protesters that yeah. we're seeing. In yeah, I wasn't expecting that. That that is like beyond imagination to me. Yeah, that that is beyond ignorance because. Sure. It, I, I knew that we are not that we were not prepared for this, mm-hmm. and I knew it would be difficult to handle it. Mm-hmm. If you don't take them, I'm I'm not justifying uh, the Chinese government or the way the Chinese government handled things because it wasn't ideal or perfect. But the way they tackled the situation, it was the only way to control it. Yeah, we if they didn't do it in this way. It wouldn't have been five, six months, not oh, two months. Yeah, like yeah, it was. Yeah. So it was necessary. Yeah. I knew it wouldn't be the same in the West, but to see people protesting, I, I wasn't imagining. I, I'm, I'm rather disappointed. You yeah. Know? And I, I, I'm scared to see how ignorant people can be and how selfish. Sure. You know, to see one of the protesters, he was protesting because he wanted to have a, a have a haircut. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be kidding me. A haircut. Yeah, yeah. No, so you're, 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 you're willing to risk your life for your looks? I mean, you have to be beyond ignorant. And if it's, if it's the guy that I saw, then, then he's got other issues with his looks to worry about, not to, not to be too snarky. But you know, his, hair, his hair is the least of his problems, if it's the guy that uh, yeah, I think I saw. Exactly. I saw. I saw a clip of a guy saying that, so. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, the, 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 hair, the hair was a strong suit. He needs to move on to other issues. Um, then, on the other hand, you have people in Peru who lost all their lives, all their their their, their uh, you know their jobs, 
and they're walking back to their towns in the middle of the pandemic because they have no way to make money, they have no way to pay their rents, they have no way to feed their kids, and they're walking back to their towns. Yeah. And, you know, in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. And you have people in the U.S. protesting for a haircut. Yeah. Because they cannot get a haircut. I mean, you have we, we have to get some perspective here. You know? Yeah. It, 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 it's very disappointing to see this stuff. Yeah, I am quite horrified by by that as well. And one thing that I've been saying to people, I'm curious your take on this, but, you know, I thought, and I still think this is the case, but it's not going to be sort of the semi idealized is the wrong word, but I'll use it as a placeholder. And I think people will be able to get my, the more nuanced point I'm trying to find the right word for. But I, this is one of those globally, we haven't had a globally relatable unifying well we haven't had a globally relatable event in you know 100 years spanish flu we haven't had a thing that's yeah. touched the entire world remotely like this the closest has. was ebola and it wasn't well but no, but but it was local nowhere I mean, near this there was some panic in some other places but it was still regionalized the, the, the it, yeah. it was terrible for those people but it was managed to be contained so i had i was yeah, I'm I'm enough of a hippie to think this, but not enough to think that it was going to pan out this way. Just to think, oh, I'd be nice if this somehow could be a unifying, you know, the rallying cry could be around defeating this thing. I, the you and I have had a lot of conversations offline uh, that we would keep offline about details about political thoughts of, of, of lots of places, but I, and you know, you know where I stand vis-a-vis uh, President Number Forty Five here. Uh, not a fan, but I, I, I was, you know, I was, I was hoping, I was hoping when it became clear it was going to spread. Because when I left China, they were trying to contain it, and I did not bring it. And I was say, I've talked about this for hours. So if you're only hearing me say this for the first time, there's, there's, I get into this other places, but I know how to be. I was extremely hygienic and quarantined. I self quarantined twice before the mandatory thing in LA, but mm. I, I was actually. When it became clear that yes, there were cases, I was hoping that the president here would go, even if it was for the crassest of political reasons and self interest, is like, oh, if I rock this, then my renomination, you know, my reelection is in the bag. I was hoping, I was actually hoping <laughs> that he would get up and like have, I was hoping for him to hit a, hit a home run in the World Series on this, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't that you, you, you put aside self Europe. interest. You have to put aside all that. It's like, come on, man, yeah. take this seriously because yeah. it's serious. But no, like you said, it's it's revealed that the level of idiocy and and denial. But whether it's a bunch of hillbillies with their AR fifteens in a in a parking lot, or whether it's you know President Dunning Kruger. You know, Adderall sniffing his way through a press conference incoherently for hours because he can't do rallies. I mean, what kind of what's happened? Anyway, sorry, this is I've gone on a big tangent. I want to talk more to my guest in terms of your thoughts vis-a-vis China stuff. You've been there 14 years. You guys got stopped and your your wife's like to the guy. It's like he hasn't left China. He's he's resident of China. He's been here decade and a half, you know. Um, what are well, you th- what are you thinking sort of longer term? Listen, uh, this is not uh, okay. I, I, I'm gonna put it this way: this is not the place it used to be uh, eight years ago. You know what? Uh, there was uh, uh, this friend of yours. He was talking about this, and I answered to to his post. I said, "We used to live in a country where you you used to think that you were part of something, and there was this." promises, you know, development and, you know, the country was shaping up to be an amazing, the most beautiful and amazing country in the world. And the foreigners, we wanted to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And we were trying our best to contribute to that. And then we had to find out that we will never be part of that. Yeah. And no matter what you do, and no matter how long time you're spending here, and how good you do to society here, how many contributions, you always will be a tourist yeah. in this country. This is not your home. Mm-hmm. And now they, they are 
they make sure that you you understand that this is not your home. Yeah. So that's basically what it is. And and you know I'm I'm 45 years old and I don't mm. feel home. I'm I'm feel I'm, I feel I'm floating. Yeah. Uh, going back to Venezuela is not an option. Right. We all know the situation there, and uh, that's not an option. So I'm pretty much uh, no. I don't want to say homeless because it sounds selfish. Mm -hmm. People who are literally homeless. But I don't have. I don't feel that I can settle down. I have a place where I can settle down because it becomes it. it it's become increasingly it become increasingly difficult to do anything here for foreigners. Before you can go to a bank as a foreigner in China, you can go to a bank and open a bank account in the in the morning, and you're settled. You can't do now, that. Now. It's you cannot do that anymore. Even to get a, a telephone line. A, a, you can't you, it's, you, you, it's, you you can't get it or it's a, or it's a very difficult process compared to what it used very, to be. It's difficult. You, yeah, you can get it, but you have to go to a specific place and, and, and you have to submit some documents and it is difficult. Right. It's difficult. It's becoming more and more difficult to do anything as a foreigner. So it's a, it's it's not a place where you feel welcomed. It's not a place where you feel in in general the mentality of the people during the pandemic. Uh, the government uh, releases a, a poll, an opinion poll mm -hmm. about giving foreigners who are living here and working here uh, in high-end, high-level jobs, give them residence. And the the response from the, the people was... Yeah. People was outraged. Yeah. How dare you they give residence to foreigners here there there will never be chinese uh, people are literally angry you know angry mm -hmm. about the idea of giving foreigners who are living and working here a residence right. not even a nationality yeah so you there is this uh atmosphere in general of people of resentment and, and rejecting foreigners and you can feel it you can you can actually feel it, and if you if you talk to people, people are just fleeing, running away from from China because of this sentiment that is brewing in in, in the society. I I so, like I've been seeing that a lot, and again, I didn't leave with the idea that I'm fleeing for good. I just I was coming back. I was going to come back for work anyway. Again, I detailed this in other shows a lot. Uh, and as a guest a lot recently, people have had me on to talk about this specifically, so I feel like I've ever talked it. But, um, you know, I, at the time, we were getting ready to start a project actually in, in Paris. And so I just I didn't want to be stuck during the travel lockdowns. And so I just came on back and got to San Francisco and then, you know, did the quarantine thing, et cetera. But, um, but at this point, like, I, I don't even know. I might technically be able to come back. I mean, July's May. I think August is is the nearest yeah. possibility, and mm -hmm. my lease expires mid September. So I'll like come back to move out, and meanwhile, just you know, I'm gonna have to pay you know the season. Do you pay the seasons of rent there? Do you? Well, you have a house, but you also have an apartment in the city. Do you yeah, pay you the pay, three months it, at a time or six months? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, three months. Three yeah, months we, the, the season of rent, the three months at a shot. Yeah, just yeah. just paid. You know three months of rent and it will be at least that long before I'll see it again. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty crazy. That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty daunting. Um, it's a nationalism that is very toxic, you know, and you can feel it. And uh, it, uh, I just put a, po I put a post on Facebook yesterday. There is this girl who she was mixed race, but yeah. she's Chinese. She has a Chinese uh, identity. Win and she has a Chinese Winnie Winnie Zhang Fei Fei. I just I saw the uh, yes. I saw your post. I yeah. And it's sad, you know. It's sad the, the, because she's Congolese Chinese, and people tell her that you, you're never gonna be Chinese. You are not Chinese, and the abuse and the bullying and it is horrible. Right. Horrible. Right. So having uh, mixed race kids is also you know. Worrying to me, mm -hmm. my, my two kids uh, they're a uh, mixed race, right? Probably Had, because this this girl is mixed with African that he have this, you know. Yeah, she 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 types as 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 black, um, you know, a, bit, a beautiful girl, and she's yeah, she, she's she, gorgeous, she, and she's super smart. Yeah, she and she's she's got an African father and a Chinese mother, 
and yeah. uh, and speaks much languages. And she's like, she's I, I think she's she graduated undergrad from some place like Boston University, and she's going to Johns Hopkins for something kind of high minded. I saw the little article about her, and do you, do you see that? I mean, do you have issues like do your have you had stuff with your kids or you? You mentioned I know the, what, what kids you are beautiful. Get, you, know? <laughs> you mentioned what you get with like the why are you here? But your kids are. I mean, I've seen you know photos of both of your kids, and there's they look enough Chinese that I think if people didn't look really closely, that I wouldn't think that they would. Yeah. Do you think they pass? Is yeah, what I'm trying they, to ask in so many words. No, they 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 they, they do pass. The little one uh, more than the big one. The big one he looks more like his mom, more Chinese. Yeah. The little one is he have like a bigger eye. He looks more European. Oh, I don't okay. know where he okay. got that from. Um, <laughs> hopefully you. But, <laughs> yeah, hopefully me. Hopefully uh, you. I don't want to start any controversy in the household, but uh, hopefully, get, hopefully uh, that's your influence. I ordered the, the genetically the, the test. <laughs> you but, ordered a uh, test. You ordered a paternity yeah. test. <laughs> Seriously? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Like wow, getting getting well, very Sometimes real. I have my doubts because he's too beautiful. You know? Real, <laughs> real, real house dads of Nantong here. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but you know, it's the sentiment. People, uh, people in China, they are very, um, they are very careful about their race and they are very yeah. protective. Mm-hmm. Of their their, not their culture, because I've noticed that a lot of Chinese people they don't they don't give a damn about their culture. You know, they don't like mm. the music and they don't like mm. you know the the literature and they, they they appreciate more foreign culture. Yeah, but of when it comes to race, they're yeah. very protective mm-hmm. of the Han race. Right. Yeah. So having somebody who is not Han who is mixed. And wanting to be Chinese, people don't like that. Yeah. A lot of people don't like that in China. And right now, they're kids. They have no problem. Well, but they, when they grow up, you know, uh, probably they will encounter some more difficulties. So you... People telling that you are not Chinese and, you know... Well, so you, you expect that you'll be there. I mean, your wife's from there. You expect that you'll be there for... I mean, that's that's... You expect you'll be there for the duration kind of thing? I mean, is that the... No. No? No, because I, I actually, I foresee that things will get more difficult for foreigners to a point when... Well, right now, I cannot work. You, Literally, I, you, I, you, you I'm can't not allowed work to with... have to get... Em- no, I cannot get employment. Now, that's like a rule of some kind? It's not just the yeah, way the market it's a is? Rule. Yeah. No, no, it's, a, it's in a restriction that comes with the visa that I oh, have, okay. the family visa. Uh, but for all, some other visas, uh, uh, I cannot get employment. I can I can work as a freelancer in certain areas, like mm-hmm. doing my art stuff. That's right. fine. But get employment, I cannot. You can't go get like a job job someplace. You can't just mm, go get like no. another job. And I think that's actually no. pretty typical on the household visa, like the marriage visa. If your visa is tied to a Chinese spouse... Then you generally are. Yeah. I mean, there there are doctors and surgeons who are prohibited from working. That's the extreme example. And then yeah. sometimes they'll make if they see, if they see that you're like that, like there's a critical thing in society they need. They they'll they'll make the exception. Yeah. But but I I know but before, I, I've, I've seen stories like this in a couple of my yeah. WeChat. It has groups, been like that know. always. Has been yeah. like that. But some right now. The way they're enforcing it. Yeah, I was going to say, it used to be a little more of a gray area about the, the, again, especially if the local, if your local, um, I'll try not to be controversial, if your local uh, powers that be knew you and thought well of you, then you get away with, you know. Yeah. And you're not, you're not up to anything bad. It just means that you're, you were, you know, you were out, you were coloring outside the lines of those rules, but now it's, so so now they're super strict, basically. So, so, so I have friends yeah. who have been visited by the police, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the the police knock at your door and push the door inside and passport everybody, and you know the check-ins are mm-hmm. quite brutal. Hmm. You know? They just come on in, or they, yeah, and that didn't happen before. Yeah, I. So I, that's my point. I literally have never had at my place, and I, I kind of live in a in a little bit more. It's basically like. Like old people who have kind of successful kids, I think is is a lot of my neighbors, and then some young professionals. But it it tends it tends it's it's skewing a little more up. I have like a tiny place and a little more of an upscale 
kind of development, you know, and it's there's like multiple layers of security. And of course, it's the cops. I mean, they go where they want to go. But um, but there isn't uh, there are very few foreigners there. So there's very few kind of suspicious riffraff for them to check on in the first place, I guess. But at least I mean, so I've been gone since, you know, late January. And I understand that's happening a lot now. And I wondered, yeah. I wondered if I've been missing that because, I mean, I, of course, they know from your, you know, when you fly in and out, I mean, it goes in a system. They can see that you're out of the country. But, but I never, ever had that. I never had a knock on the door, you know, never had any of that at all. Like never, never, never once. But, uh, well, but maybe the, that's the, just my, my local during, police station is actually pretty awesome. That's like about a block away where I have to go and check in for the, you know. Um, anyway, so, so the point is that th- those people are actually pretty, uh, pr- you know, pr- pr- pretty cool. They're, 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 they're about their job. They're not about causing hassles. But I guess if mm, they were told to go, go rouse some foreigners, they're going to go rouse some foreigners. You know? Well, during the, the, the peak of the pandemic here in China, they called here looking for me okay a couple of times the the local police station they called my in-laws just like asking where, where make, i was make sure you're there yeah making sure that i was here and i was mm-hmm. you know i'm not i was not going anywhere and uh, so yeah they check on you and they 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 have records and they know where you are and what you're doing yeah. and yeah and you don't the scary thing is you don't know you don't you don't submit any information. You just, they just know. They get you and they, they find you. And yeah. So that that's a bit, a bit scary and a bit sketchy. But. So your experience kind of lines up with what I've heard from some other friends between Shanghai, Beijing, some of these groups that I'm that I'm tracking. So you think it's only going to – is it fairly consistent now? Do they check in on you now? Or is this it was like the peak and now it's kind of – it's kind of has the checking in on you mm. slowed down. Was that kind of just like peak COVID, or is it still kind of an ongoing? It's not. It, it, it's more relaxed now. It's more relaxed now. They are not checking. They, they just okay. called a couple of times to make sure that I was here, but they, they didn't keep checking. Okay. Uh, but also, I'm not moving a lot. I mean, I should go to Nanjing to see my 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 son. Uh, but I I was I was suggested not to go there. Not. Quite yet, right? Your, your older, your older month. son lives with your ex-wife in Nanjing, yeah. and then you're there in Nanjing. Exactly. So, well, well it, so, it reminded me, yeah, because I, I need to probably pop in my Chinese SIM card. I haven't had it in my phone in a long time, and I have the you know the roaming, but uh, but I probably need to check it and see. I mean, it's going to blow up with messages. It's going to be a bazillion <laughs> messages. I've had. I haven't put my Chinese SIM card in in a couple of, in two or three months. You know. So yeah, it's going to yeah, just go gonna crazy be, with all the messages. It's going to be fun. Everything from, <laughs> yeah, all the places. Well, well, we could talk. We could easily talk for hours. And actually, we have. There's only an hour or so of this going in the show. But we talked before in between, and we'll talk after, which is nice. In terms of what you're working on, let's end this on a little bit of a – let's try to find a little bit of an upside here. Do you think there's an upside to the outcome of this? Do you think it's going to cause people to be more reflective in a certain way, more conscientious? And maybe there's some macro things that won't change with society, but like to a personal level, what, 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 what if any, if any positives or upsides answer, can you see? Yeah. The answer to that is in my, my episode that I just released oh, yesterday. <laughs> okay. And what's that no, episode I, titled? What's that episode titled? And we'll, we'll link it in the show notes. It's called uh, changes within yourself, or, or the change happens within. Perfect. Uh, it is. Uh, I was basically talking about how people talk about something have to change after this, something have to change, something have to change. But we co- we keep talking about this like it's an external thing that's going to somehow happen somewhere. Right. And that is not right. Yeah, some things have to change, but the changes start with you yep. inside of you yep. with your family with your kids mm-hmm. and one of my closing notes is that well actually my, my main closing note in that episode is that we realize with this pandemic we realize that we can be more hands on on our kids education mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if we are more careful about the kind of individual that we are raising probably we're going to be more effective when we're electing our leaders, you know. Yeah. 
when when we select the 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 future of our countries mm -hmm. people who are in charge of electing mm -hmm. you know the presidents and the leaders and mm -hmm. What what is the what is the criteria? If we have individuals that are ethical, they have principles, you know. So, one of the things that uh, the one of the positive things that I see is that we can we, we realize now that we can be more hands on on our kids' education, how we are raising our kids. Uh, a lot of people have to do homeschooling, right? A lot of people have to sit down and do homework with their kids. A lot of people have more time with their families and can have more conversations. How many parents, they don't even know what kind of kids they have. Kids, they're immersed in their video games and their in, in their social medias and, and the internet. And parents are immersed in their work. And they don't really have a relationship. They live together, yeah. but they don't have a relationship. They don't have a conversation. You don't know if your kid is a, is a white supremacist. You don't know if your kid is a, is, is a racist. You don't know if he's gay. You don't know if he's whatever it is that your kid it, it wants to be. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of, a lot of kids they need guidance for one reason or another, and we don't know. We don't know. We don't know what's going on with our kids. We don't. We live together. But we don't have conversations with them, and we don't know what kind of people we are raising. So that 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 is a. That is a good thing that I see in this pandemic, realizing that we can spend time with our kids and have conversations and getting to know uh, your kids and your family and how how you build uh, or how you, you manage the time with mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. If we want to learn something from this, I think this is a good thing to learn. Well, I think that's a, a really great note to sort of leave it on. I think that's that there's a there's that's realistic optimism, but yeah. or, or optimistic realism. And I, I think that's a good way to, to to look at it. In terms of people finding you, your main website is still is it still Mundo Santo? Dot, uh, yeah, Mundo Santo dot art dot art. Oh, wait, was it always dot yeah. art or is that a new one? Did you get a new? I thought it was dot com back got, in the day. I, I, yeah, no, I changed it. Nice. Mundo, the, Mundo Santo dot art. I will, of course, link that in the show notes. I'll also link your current, as we record your current episode of the Creativity Roots podcast, yes, where you're talking about Thank what you. you just talked about, as well as yep. your new art course. What's your what's your art course called? Uh, it's, it's in YouTube. Uh, uh -huh. you, can, you can find it in the, in the website. Just Basic Drawing with Ronald Paredes. Okay. And uh, you can find it through the website. Well, I will put those links in the show notes and make it easy for people. Ronald, my friend, it's really nice to see you. I'm glad you're, glad you're doing all right, same all things here, considered. Man. Yeah, yeah. Same, same. Well, we'll you look great. To. Keep doing what oh, you're thanks, doing. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. So, uh, yeah, talk to you later. Take care.